Okay, here we are building a photo frame app, and this is about week four of class in this particular CIS 150 AB 14 week class. So let's go ahead and click into this assignment here. And this assignment is different in that it requires you to create your own um, new application. So you're going to create an app that displays a photo. Um, we'll teach you a little bit about how to use Xcode and um, and let's go ahead and get started in this. So go ahead and read through this assignment. I'm going to take you through it on my own. So we'll just watch this video and you should be able to get along just fine in it. Um, first thing we got to do is create a new project. So I'm going to close all this stuff out. And uh, I'm down here in Xcode, so I'm going to launch Xcode. First thing you do is click Xcode. This is the application we use to create apps for the App Store. Well, in Xcode, uh, what we want to do is create a new Xcode project. That's this top button here. Go ahead and click that. And uh, importantly, you want to make sure all your stuff is in, in line up here. So I'm going to choose iOS. I'm making an app for the iPhone. This would be an app for a Mac, for a watch, for a TV OS. Um, but we're going to do iOS. And it's going to be an app. And click Next. Okay, let's go ahead and fill this stuff out. Uh, we're going to call this uh, Photo Frame App. And uh, I have a team. You might not have a team. You might have to put something in here. Typically, the organizational identifier is a unique identifier to identify your app. And usually, it's your uh, website in reverse. So you know, I work for mesacc.edu, so it's edu.mesacc. And then it just kind of puts the, the name of the app after that. That's just a unique identifier for Apple to identify your app when you submitted to the App Store. Um, importantly, interface. Okay, uh, Swift UI is something that is new and we're not doing that for this class. I have a couple apps in Swift UI. It's pretty awesome, but we're learning in Storyboard. So make sure Storyboard is selected here. UI App Delegate is fine. Or, sorry, UI Kit App Delegate is fine. And the language should be Swift, not Objective-C. Uh, we're not going to use core data and we're not going to include tests in this, so that can remain unchecked. Click the next button. Might ask you where to put the app. I'm just going to throw it on the desktop. You might want to put it in your file somewhere. That's going to create a folder with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of files associated with your app. So when you submit the app to me, uh, make sure you submit that whole folder, not just the project file, but the whole folder. Zip it up, send it my way when you submit the assignment. And here we go. Now we're inside of Xcode. It looks kind of confusing. Don't worry too much. These are the files that make up your app. When you select different files over here, it changes what's viewed over here. So for instance, here's some Swift code with the app delegate, scene delegate, some Swift code. You don't have to worry about that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the view controller and the main storyboard. So the view controller is the code that kind of is associated with your view, uh, your first view. You might have many different view controller codes. So if you've got like page one, page two, page three, they might have their own view controller. Um, and uh, the storyboard down here, click on the storyboard, and that's kind of like a graphical representation of your app. So like an overview, like a bird's eye view of your app. Give it a moment to load. And if you scroll around, you can see there's it kind of looks like a phone, right? And here it is. And the little arrow here says, this is the first view that your, this is the initial view that your app is going to launch on. I'm going to click this down here to zoom out a little bit. And now you can kind of see just a regular overview. Now, here we go. If we hit the play button here, it will launch the simulator and bingo, you've built your first app, right? It doesn't do anything. It's a white screen. It's got nothing on it. So as a part of this assignment, we're going to add an image to this view. If you were to hook your own phone up and you provision it correctly, then you'd be able to, you'd be able to build this app on your device. So like I'm a developer for Apple, so I, uh, I have an account. I have my account associated with Apple. And I believe even with free accounts, you can build to uh, a certain number of devices. Maybe, I don't remember how many devices it lets you build to, but not too many. Um, but for, in a limited way, you would be able to build these apps on your own phone without even being a paid developer. First time you build on any of these simulators up here, see there's different simulators you can select. In this case, I'm building on iPod Touch. Uh, but you could do iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Max, iPads. Uh, the first time you build, it takes a while. It's got to launch that simulator for the first time, and it loads in all that stuff. Okay, here we go. The simulator is launched. 
And uh, if you want to resize the simulator, you can kind of drag the corners of it like this. And um, this is essentially simulating, uh, in this case, an iPod Touch. And uh, if you hit the home button, you'll see it just acts kind of similar to a regular phone, uh, iPhone. And um, so there's not much to see here. So the book wants us to add a photo to that. So let's go ahead and stop the simulator. That's the little stop button there. And uh, let's take a look at the storyboard first. Um, so we want to drop a photo uh, on the main storyboard here. Okay, so first thing you want to do is click the plus sign here, plus. And, uh, and I want to look for uh, something that says probably like image. So I'm typing image, and yeah, it says image view there. So now that you you can see the image view here, you can just click and drag it onto the view here. Boop, like that. Uh, I'm going to take this a little step further and I'm going to move this image kind of to make it, uh, eh, let's just make it fill the whole screen, right? So I'm going to drag it all the way top to bottom like that. Now, uh, I'm going to do something even specialer, which they don't probably tell you in the book yet, but I'm going to add some constraints to it. So what that means is when you rotate the image, it's going to stretch to fill the screen. Um, just going to click this button down here and then just add these little kind of like lock bars and just kind of locks it to this side and this side and this side and add these four constraints with that button down there. That just kind of adds the constraints around the edges there. So now when you rotate the uh, image, it and if you op open it up on like an uh, iPad, it still stretches to the size of the screen. Uh, problem is like now uh, we don't actually have any images here, any fancy images of our own to select. So you'll see when you select the actual image view here, on this side there's like an attributes inspector or I think that's what they call it, but there's just more details about the image. You can change the background color and stuff like that. I want to actually select an image here, but um, I haven't brought any of my own images in. Um, so I'm just going to go to the internet and uh, Google and just find an uh, image to throw in there. You know, and this isn't like going to market or anything, so uh, I don't have to worry about copyright or any of that jazz. Uh, I'm going to look up uh, Red Dwarf image. So images from Red Dwarf. Here we go. Red Dwarf is a British sci-fi sitcom. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's just use this one. And I'll just uh, right click and save image on my desktop here. I'll just call it Red Dwarf. Okay, and I'm going to show it in the finder there. Just going to kind of bring up a little finder so I can find it easier. Although I did throw it on the desktop, it should be easy enough to find on the desktop, right? Oh, I guess I downloaded it to the downloads directory, not the desktop. So there it is in the downloads. I'm going to actually drag it. So I actually just dropped it on the desktop there. See the red dwarf uh, image down there on the desktop. Let's move this over a little bit here. And uh, let's let's learn about assets folder. So you'll see over here, there's a bunch of files to make up your app. A lot of them are Swift files. Those are just coding files, right? Just a bunch of code inside. And then the storyboard file, we learned about that a little bit. That's like the overview. Um, this assets one, assets.xcassets, is for holding images, basically. And it's kind of cool because it'll hold different size images as well. So um, depending on what device you're viewing it on, it might show it at a higher resolution. Uh, but for our use case here, we're just going to drag this image right into there. And see, that makes a new item. It's called Red Dwarf and 1x. So if you had higher resolution ones, you could do 2x, 3x. Uh, but in our case, we just got that image. No big deal. Um, go back here to the uh, storyboard now. And let's select that uh, image view that we got here. And now, when we do this drop down, we should find, yeah, an image called Red Dwarf. Boom. There we go. Very cool. Now, um, depending on how you have it set up, it may or may not fill the screen. It might like stretch out like weird like that. So you might want to check check aspect fit, which makes it fit. It maintains the aspect ratio, squishes it down to fit from edge to edge. Um, or, you know, aspect fill will kind of fill the screen. It won't mess with the aspect ratio, but it'll still fill the screen. Ah, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll choose that one. But now the cat's off the Oh, you know, it's got to be aspect fit. And uh, and what I'll also do is maybe make the background color uh, black. There. If you don't like that color, you can always do a custom color. You know, 
to your change colors to your heart content hearts content um, but there we go now I'm going to build and run this app and see what it looks like so build and run is this button here again the play button and that means just build like build is like compile everything make sure there's nothing broken make sure there's no errors and then run means run it in the simulator hmm, that's pretty interesting now I don't know why it's not showing my image there it should Oh, there it is. Nope, let's not do a troubleshooting. So evidently, you just got to be really patient there. This might take an extra moment to uh, to load. And the problem was the launch screen looks just the same as our white screen before. So, so be patient. It should eventually pop up there. If it doesn't, then uh, we can do some troubleshooting. For instance, if if it doesn't, what you could do is let's let's get a little advanced here. Go to the view controller here, and let me just show you something. So the uh, here's the storyboard. Click on the top bar here for the, the view, and uh, then click over here to see there's a bunch of different tabs. Xcode's got tabs and tabs and tabs, and just, uh, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, don't worry. It'll eventually come together. Uh, but you'll see here it says uh, View Controller right here. And what that's saying is that this view here is linked to this code here. Okay, That's where the connection is made between this code and that view. And uh, this uh, thing that says view did load, this happens, uh, it's a function that happens when your view loads. And what I'm going to do in here is say print, and this is a little, you haven't learned this yet, and then view is loaded, exclamation points. And uh, now when I build and run, command R is build and run, or you can click the play button there. Now once the view actually loads, it'll print out this little statement. So then I'll know, like, hey, the view is loaded. We should be able to see our image by now. Um, because you saw it, previously, I was like sitting there waiting and I thought maybe something was wrong. So if I had this print statement in, then I'd know, hey, the view hasn't loaded yet because it didn't print the statement out. So just be patient, Dave. And you'll see now I'm like worried, right? Well, oh, where's my where's my photo? Where's my photo? But it hasn't printed up oh, there. It printed now and the photo's loaded. So you'll see that's a little bit of uh, how to kind of start debugging your uh, applications a little bit. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to hold down the command and hit the arrow key, and that's going to rotate the image. And see, uh, because I added those constraints, it kind of resizes the image for me. Pretty cool. And if you did provision your device, you uh, uh, then you would be able to find your actual device connected up here. You just select your iPhone up there and uh, and then build to that. I, I haven't done that for the work computer. Well, maybe I have. Okay, it looks like my phone might be ready now, might be provisioned correctly, and I'm going to try and build and run it. Just, again, this is not a part of the assignment, but I thought it might be fun. Uh, And there we are. Look at that. So yeah, I've made an app. So this is the Photo Frame app. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or you get stuck, go ahead and send me a message. You can comment on this video. Feel free to subscribe to Crack and Code with Dave for all my latest videos. And um, stay safe out there.